Okay. So organizing ideas. There is a document on Blackboard, and you'll find it says guidelines for organizing ideas. Remember, after a creative strategy brief is developed, and after everybody signs off on it and agrees to the brief itself, agrees that this is the target audience, this is the brand advantage, this is the brand disadvantage, this is the, the target audience's problems that they're having, uh, this is the, these are the issues that are important to the, to the category, here are the competitors, here's their advantages or disadvantages relative to the brand you're interested in. After, after you go through all that and you come to an insight, and then a message and, and the reasons to believe the message and never forget about including that. Once that's all signed off on by all the people that are on the team, then everybody goes off and starts to work on, their org on the organizing idea. If this is the message that everyone believes we want to put in the minds of the target audience, what's the best way to do it? Going back to GEICO, because it's a, it's, it's a famous campaign, um, it, you know, clearly the message was it's easy to switch, right? That's the message. So the organizing idea was we're going to use cavemen becoming insulted when they hear someone say that it's so easy to switch, even a caveman can do it. And that we're going to show cavemen in different executions taking offense and being offended by what they believe to be being demeaned and made fun of. Now, uh, organizing ideas um, have a number of issues. If they're well done, you should be able to figure out how that idea can be done many different ways, but still be the same idea. Still be the same idea. Some campaigns run, I'm not sure if you've seen the Liberty Emu Limu or Limu Emu campaign uh, on, on, on online or in, on television. But Liberty Insurance has got a campaign going on right now with different, different, actually it's got two or three campaigns. It's got uh, some people standing in front of the Statue of Liberty talking about Liberty, Liberty Insurance. That's one campaign. That's not the same camp campaign as the EMU campaign, which is a very different campaign. It's not unusual for very large spending marketers to have more than one campaign going on at the same time. So, for example, and I think I have it in, in this material here, you'll see the, uh, in terms of Geico, you see the, you see the Gecko campaign, you see the Caveman campaign, you see the B-List Celebrity campaign. I really encourage you, and hope, hopefully all these links work, but there's a, let me see if I can find my favorite one. Let's see if it runs. Yeah, let's see, let's see if this works. Stay with me. Sometimes these, these don't, don't, don't always work on, um, sometimes these don't always work on Zoom. Let's see what happens. Okay, here. And sometimes it slows down, so pray with me. Brenda Coates is a real Geico customer, not a paid celebrity. So to help tell her story, we hired Mr. Burt Bacharach. Last year, I was rear-ended by a Geico customer. I was hit in the rear. First thought in my mind was about that funny lizard. Lizard licks his eyeball. I was so impressed with how they had on my claim, I switched. I hope I'll never get hit in the rear. Geico. Real service, real savings. Here's another execution. Steve Odell is a real Geico customer, not a paid celebrity. So to help tell his story, we hired a celebrity. Recently, my father was carjacked at Knife Point. Oh, honey, that's all right. This face has seen more knives than a Benihana. Geico handled the whole thing with unbelievable sensitivity. Sensitivity? I can't feel my face. I was so impressed, I switched to Geico and saved over $600. I was very happy. Geico. Real service, real savings. Am I smiling? I can't tell Steve. So Geico was running at one point in time three different campaigns. Geico was running the Gecko campaign talking about savings. That was one campaign. And and all the all the executions featured the Gecko. At the same time they were running the Gecko campaign, 
they were running the caveman campaign. And all the executions featured cavemen because it was a different message. The gecko, cam the gecko campaign was about saving 15%. That was the message. The caveman campaign, that was about, it's easy to switch, which is, which is a different message and a different idea and a different organizing idea, thus a different campaign. And then you had, well, I just showed you two executions. And again, there you can, you, you may have, if you're interested, you should really look at uh, all of these executions. They're really, some of them are really funny. Um, um, they're all what I, what I, again, I call the B-list celebrity campaign in which B-list celebrities talk about another issue based on a different idea. The insight was people may know that Geico saves you money. They may know it's easy to switch, but they're still concerned and haven't switched because they're wondering, will Geico make good on the claims? Will Geico, if I need to cash in on the claim, because I would say I had a car accident or a tree fell down in my house or something like that, will Geico reimburse me? They're worried about, will Geico pay for the claim? That's a different insight and a different message. The message there is, yes, Geico will always pay your claim. You can count on us. The organizing idea is we're going to show, as it says here, and this is on Blackboard, we're going to show B-list celebrities talking about how Geico always makes good on its claims. So organizing ideas, which come after only you've developed a creative strategy brief, have to meet all these criteria. Now, I'm not asking you to develop an organizing idea for the first graded team project. That's gonna be coming. I'm not asking you to do that. But I, I wanted you to be mindful of where this is going. And we'll go, we'll go into some of, this, some of these criteria you see here. I, I think I have uh, nine criteria. We'll go, we'll go over them at another time. And this, this document is on Blackboard, so you don't need to take notes on it. And, and this, is, this is not going to be on the, the midterm exam, but you need to understand where you're going because there's an important point I want to make. Students have asked me, does it always work this way? We, you do research, you go, develop a creative strategy, and then you do an organizing idea. Does it always work that way? And my answer is no. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes, you start with the organizing idea. Sometimes you get this idea and you don't even know why you love it, but you know you love it. You realize it's got all kinds of potential. You realize there's so much you can do with it. It meets all the criteria that a good organizing idea can meet, which is you can use it in, on video, you can use it in print or digital print, you can use it on billboards, you can use it as a basis for a conference, for a, um, events. You can find little tweaks to apply it to an event of some kind or to a promotion or to a coupon. That's what they call not just an organizing idea, but a big idea. Big ideas are organizing ideas that can be used in a variety of ways. Sometimes you arrive at that idea just in brainstorming a campaign before you've even done any research. So then what do you do? Do you say, we've got this great idea, but we're not going to develop it because we haven't done our research yet? No, you're not going to do that. You're going to reverse engineer the organizing idea. You're going to go back. You're going to ask yourself, what's the message that this idea is delivering that we are so enamored with this idea? Is it a compelling message? And if you think it is, what is it? You identify what that message is, and then you ask yourself the next question. Okay, so what, what insight is that message based on? And then what you do is you say, the insight is this. So you're, you're kind of going backwards. You start with the creative idea, the organizing idea, the idea that's going to be the basis for all of your executions. And you go back to find, ask yourself, what's the message that, that is it delivering in people's minds? And what insight is that based on? And then you do research to see if, that, if you can actually prove that that insight is relevant to the target audience. 
So what you've done is instead of going, going A, B, C, and D, you start with D and you go D, C, B, and A. That's what makes the marketing business so interesting, that there's an MBA, rigorous, strategic way of going, going about what you're doing, much as we've been describing for the last four weeks, and much as uh, we'll, we'll talk about when each team meets with me on Monday. But then there is the creative exercises that I'm talking about now, which even, even if you take it by the numbers, you start with the research and you do the insight, then you do the message, and then you start thinking about an organizing idea. That's a very creative process. But sometimes you start with the creative process and you go backwards. Uh, and that's okay too, if you can prove that it's going to deliver a compelling message to people. Now, um, let me stop there.